Hi, Sam Peebles here from United Peebles TV, here with Simon Caney, editor of The Busby Years, this wonderful book of zine that's just been published. Uh, he's just here to have a, a quick chat. We're going to do a series of videos and uh, go through the years, and it's just thanks for coming in, Simon. No problem. Delighted to be here. So what was the thinking behind the book, the book of zine? Well, I think when you look at Manchester United and, uh, and how they grew as a club, it was really Matt Busby that, that turned them into a, a sort of a global team, if you like. He led them into Europe in the first place yeah. and, and built this legendary team of the Busby Babes. Uh, and then obviously the, the tragedy of the Munich disaster, um, but then 10 years later winning the European Cup as well. It's just an extraordinary story. Yeah. Um, we managed to put it together using archive copy from old copies of World Soccer Magazine, We've got really respected writers such as David Meek, Andy Mitten, yeah. uh, writing in here, and some fabulous old pictures that we've sort of managed to I, uh, The pictures are wonderful. That, I, I would say that's probably one of the best parts of it, uh, just because it's so visual. And especially in those times, it, just getting that sort of colour added to those photos adds a new dimension, I suppose, emotion to it, which you don't really get in black and white. No, that's right. And I think, you know, a lot of these pictures, you know, we know we know the names of the old players, people like Duncan Edwards, but to actually see pictures of them in action and, and people haven't seen a lot of these things before, so that's yeah. great. Um, and obviously, not everyone's going to know the story of how Matt Busby came in and how the babes came around. So, I mean, he was he was appointed in 1945 after the war years. I mean, how how did it transition from that towards the babes? Well, he came in 1945, as you say, and uh, sort of the legend has it that he looked out across this bombed out wreckage of Old Trafford. Uh, sort of had this vision of what he wanted to build. The irony, of course, was that as a player, he'd made his name first at Manchester City mm. and then at Liverpool. Yeah. Um, and really, Liverpool had their eyes on him after the war to become a manager, but uh, United sort of stole in. And, and Good decision by United. A decent Great decision by United. And he was, he was very fond of the city, having, having enjoyed his time there when he yeah. was at Manchester City as a player. So without any real hesitation, he came in. Um, and uh, was obviously a real visionary because he knew that he could build something out of this wreckage. Yeah, it was very much, uh, he had uh, his way of thinking. Um, and, uh, my my favourite quote is that if, if you're good enough, you're old enough. Yeah. Of Busby, just that kind of, that, uh, to not want to use the Louis van Gaal word, but philosophy, it was his ethos. <laughs> uh, it, was just, it was the way he worked and it, and, and it worked. I mean, won the first FA Cup, was it in 40... 48. 48, that was the first, uh, first title or trophy in 37 years. And then it was only a couple of years later, is it 54? 50... 52? No, I think it was 52 actually. Uh, first, Fif sorry, 52. 52. Was first, uh, that was first league in 41 years. Yeah. Um, and it was just with the average age of 22 in the squad. And the interesting thing was that um, he, was, he was already by then constantly rebuilding the team. And you would think that winning the, the FA Cup in 48 was a, was a big thing, but he knew that that wasn't going to be a good enough team to go on and win the league. So yeah. I think there was some surprise among the players that he then dropped. Yeah. But they could see that actually he was doing this, he knew what he was doing. And then obviously he went through into, into the 50s and he won back-to-back -back titles in 55, 56. And then obviously the venture into Europe began and not by the FA's approval, which was a, a big, big story behind it. And... It was, I suppose it was a test because he knew, he was a visionary, he knew that European football, that football was much bigger than staying in one country. Yeah. And it was obviously that tragic decision which led to, not, it didn't lead to the Munich disaster, but it was a prelude of it. Um, it wasn't anybody's fault, but it was, it was the adventure of going elsewhere outside of English football. And football as we know it now is, is so global and I mean the Champions League is the pinnacle of football now. Yeah, it, I mean it's fascinating to, to look back and see that, that English football as an institution didn't want to enter Europe, didn't want to be any part of this European competition. Mm. Um, having seen that um, England had been knocked out of the 1950 World Cup in such a shock, been beaten by Hungary, it became very insular. Yeah. But Busby knew that they had to go on and compete with the likes of Real Madrid. Yeah. Um, and, and, and yeah, he pushed and pushed and pushed and the club backed him. Yeah. And, and they went with that and said, yeah, okay, we're going to go for this European Cup, whether the Football League and the FA want us to or not. Yeah, and that's, that's, that's what we're going to talk about in the first video. And this is going to be a nice series of videos I'm doing with Simon. Uh, in the next one, we're going to be talking about Munich, uh, the Munich Air disaster and what happened. Uh, for this book zine, every single video, there'll be a link in the description to buy the book zine. It's fantastic. Uh, I would highly recommend it. Uh, and we'll be back in the next video. Do the manager.